All right, everyone, welcome back to the house. A lot has happened since our last tour. I'd say probably, what, it was a month ago, maybe something like that, a little over a month ago. Uh, so we're gonna walk you around. Some of this stuff will be redundant if you've been following along this process of this. Uh, this is a 2,500 square foot house that I bought. And just to remind you, I had a house on 5.7 acres and then we sold that house. We were gonna be moving to a house in the lake. That house didn't appraise. And so I bought this house and did a 10 day close. And so I've been using this as sort of a little testing grounds for what uh, will be our custom home that we're going to build, which I actually just secured the lot since we've last talked. Uh, so, um, so that's why we're here. And I think, I mean, I'll probably still end up being here for three years. So if I'm going to live here, I want to make it nice and you know, maybe we'll get some of that money back when we sell the house. So that's the methodology here. But I want to show you all the little different things that I've tested out, things that I've messed up, things that I've, I think I've done well. So we'll take, give you a tour around the house. So first thing, uh, if you go back and look at the original video, the kitchen's transformed quite a bit. Uh, what we did was, it's been so long it seems, we moved in in February, so we haven't been here that long. But um, this had like a, a regular, like cheap Whirlpool hood uh, that was just, uh, you know, with an open whatever duct. And so we wanted to do a, you know, transitional style hood with a, uh, with a mantle, uh, which I think turned out, you know, pretty decent. Uh, and to do that, there was a 24 inch deep microwave cabinet here uh, that we pulled out and I wanted symmetry. And since we were doing that, I had them move the cabinets up two more inches. You know, standard countertop to bottom cabinet height is 18 inches. Um, I moved it up to 22 inches, so we added four inches to it, which then required them to put a uh, put a like a casing on top of the cabinet here. And then we did the crown molding across as well. Uh, and then, uh, of course, these were new. These three were new cabinets. Some of the cabinets were existing. Uh, and so we matched the face. Uh, and then I had my painters paint it. Let's say they're a five footer. It's kind of like a swirled out car looks good in pictures or, you know, or might look good from, you know, 10 feet away. We're going to call these cabinets a five footer. Um, they're. You know, I'll never do this again. They're, I mean, on camera, they probably look fantastic uh, in person. They're okay. I wanted perfection and I got, you know, maybe 72% of the way there. Um, there's some, you know, some jankiness to it. My painters came, I thought they knew what they were doing, but they started brush painting. It's just freaking brushing my cabinets. I'm like, what are you freaking doing? You have to spray these. You have to mask the whole room off and spray them. So anyway, the, um, the result is okay. Uh, the, the handles, I think, really make it, uh, make it look great. Uh, the other thing you're not seeing on camera is they're supposed to be white dove. They're kind of puke yellow dove. <laughs> so it, it's okay. Um, we're gonna change the color temp in here. This is at 3000 Kelvin. Uh, I'm gonna go up to 3500, but you, I wanted nice, fresh white cabinets and they're kind of just a shade off white and I think what it is that cabinet paint cabinet paint I think it's a urethane paint or as a solvent based paint uh, it, um, it's, it it has it, whatever it took a little different color match to it and by the time we unmasked the room it was too late I was stuck with with puke yellow so all the knobs are from build.com uh, which is Ferguson's company Ferguson owns build.com and uh, these are top uh, what are they called uh, TK 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 something. We'll pull out when we look at the outdoor kitchen. I'll show you the knobs. Um, but we wanted to do sort of chunky, um, hard, hard metal, um, um, you know, solid feeling uh, handles that didn't flex in the middle when you when you pulled on them. I want to say I spent about uh, probably 1,800 bucks in in handle and hardware. Uh, so you know, it you know, did add up to quite a bit. But you'll notice. I think it. I think it looks good. I mean, there's some weird stuff where I got these false panels, which, you know, if we design a, a kitchen from scratch, I wouldn't have something like that. Uh, this ended up having to become a false panel as well, so I was torn on putting a putting putting hardware on that or not, and I decided to leave it off of there. So it's one of those things. It's like um, you know, you learn these lessons as you go through the process, which is why you know I wanted to do this. 
So the computer station, the computer over there as well got, got redone, but you can see the difference. See the white speakers and then the not so white cabinets. <laughs> So it, uh, yeah, I lost my crap for a day or so. And then I said, you know what? It's not terrible. Um, and what we had him do was paint this door the same color because this door was white, like stark white. And so now it doesn't look as, as this is, the good news is this is old lady town. And so when some old lady comes and buys this house for me, they're going to like it. They're going to appreciate much more. <laughs> so um, appliances, I spent a lot of money on appliances, but uh, Wolf Cooktop, um, I prefer to have an actual range, but this already had a Whirlpool Cooktop. My cleaning lady scratched the darn thing. And we I just used this last night and I, I don't really do much prep work before we uh, make these videos. Uh, a 42 inch uh, Wolf, um, uh, whatever you call this thing, hood. And uh, I think it's a 1200 CFM blower that's built into the upper cabinet there. We also did, I did, um, all the drawers were already soft closed, but I did um, soft close on all of the, on all of the, um, all the cabinets. So I had them swap all the hinges out and redo them. I tried to get it as aligned as possible, but you can see the little, this is their idea of aligning. <laughs> Freaking idiots. This is why I say it's a five footer. So most of them are good, but you know, like I was like, yeah, it's all it's good. The face looks good. I'm like, well, what, what are you doing? So anyway, it's a, it's good for this level of the house. It's, it's, you know, for most people, it'd be really nice and, and, and it's really good, but I'm just a bit, uh, have a bit higher expectations. So, uh, the thing I did this weekend is, and you can see also, I don't know if you can see on camera, but the color temp difference. So I did our max light. We actually have these in stock. I did a, this is a 3,500 K. Uh, and so what I did is did a, um, a box we, this was already wired and switched. And so I did the, um, the junction box and then just did a little, their, their little, um, four inch whip over to a 24 inch, um, um, light fixture. Uh, I also ordered some, some Cree actually makes some, these are uh, G 10 based, I believe that's what they're called. I think it's a G10 base. So I'm gonna change these bulbs out because these are these are like a, a soft or a really uh, yellow 2700K. So I swap these bulbs out and do uh, do something, do an LED that doesn't so put off so much heat like these halogens do. Uh, so that way at least there's some uniform lighting. Backsplash, yeah, it's cool. Um, we tried the four by four tile. Um, I prefer to do like a, um, I guess it would be a, what a four by eight or two by four or whatever a normal subway tile is. And we'd subweight it instead of, uh, you know, staggered it instead of doing, uh, um, I, I think these tile would probably look best. Uh, so if I was going to do it again, we really like it. I think, I think it turned out okay. Um, but I think it would look best if they were, uh, if they were stacked, you know, in a, in a vertical fashion instead of staggered like they are, but the, our tile guys are freaking fantastic. And so over here on this area, um, we also I'd take this was like a little wine and douchey wine thingy that you put your to your you know your Walmart wine I guess. And uh, so I took that crap out so that my computer would fit. I'm waiting on the new iMac Pro to come. So we'll swap for this. So I'm gonna rewire this because this isn't my. I just kind of threw this. This is the way it was wired before. Um, so I've got a zip tie up. I'm gonna get rid of the Promise Pegasus and clean this up a bit. Uh, but I ran an ethernet connection here. So this is hardwired. And then we did the backsplash here as well. And then turned this into a seating area rather than a wine fridge and a wine thingy. So that, that turned out good. Um, these are uh, Pottery Barn uh, bar stools, which for our dirt ball kids, we need to make sure that we don't have any cushions or anything. Uh, and for whatever reason, every person likes cushions. Like we have cushions on those two chairs over there. I mean, ruined in five seconds. So I uh, uh, got rid of that. 
Newport Brass is my new favorite, so check these guys out if you're looking for hardware um, for um, the requisite. I've said this many times, is you want, you can even see the you know ball bearing swivel, and then this is a metal head. Almost all heads on, on uh, sink faucets are plastic. Uh, and so this with the, the um, you know, solid wood, I think that, or solid metal, I think this was like eight or 850 bucks or something like that. So not the most expensive, but certainly not cheap uh, but check out Newport Brass I'm, I'm a huge fan I'm probably gonna do a lot of their stuff we did the Wolf M series microwave oven and matching um, double oven so we got the Wolf double oven set up here I already got to clean the darn thing um, I like these things because of the um, this thing because of the thermometer so I can plug this in and set the temp and so plug this in here and I can set the uh, set the probe, and I can tell it, you know, so if I'm cooking a steak or whatever, I can tenderloin or something like that. You can put put that in there. This stays in the meat, and that's how that's how you 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 use the uh, the temperature probe. I'm sure there are lots of ovens that have that, but that was always my favorite thing about the Wolf ovens is how that works. Um, let me turn this off. And I don't never, normally cook convection, but. See, there's another, it's almost there. I tried to adjust it. These were the original doors, so I can't even blame this on the cabinet guys. It's just sat there for hours trying to get it to work. And so this transformed quite a bit. Um, so I have uh, two more handles I'm waiting on and one more that are back ordered. Uh, so, but they're already pre joked ready to go. I actually learned how to do this myself. I bought the little template and I had the cabinet guys do these, but I did the outdoor kitchen. And so this was all normal wire racking. I had Perry and his guys do a bunch of outlets in here so we can keep our small appliances going. We did the same backsplash all the way up to the ceiling uh, and then did these really solid floating shelves. Um, you know, in a house this size, I mean, I think this is freaking awesome. I mean, it's probably um, above the pay grade of this, this level of a house, but um, I wouldn't do this again. Uh, or won't do this in the next house. The next house will have like open door storage. So you put all this stuff in big, big, big doors. Um, I'll show you that when we when we design our house and what I'm, what I'm thinking of doing. But for this house, I think it turned out, it certainly looks cool. A little extension of the kitchen. And, um, you know, having that pantry has more than what we need uh, and from, from a storage perspective, because the way that they design the house, this is a pantry as well. Um, so where we, sort of took this and turned this into our, our sub-zero area. It dawned on me when we moved in the house, when I came to tour the house, the people who lived there previously, they had freaking crap. They couldn't even close the doors. It was stacked floor to ceiling with, I don't know, you know, Dunkaroos and Fritos or something. And uh, I can't keep that here because I eat it nonstop. I'll eat it until it's gone. Uh, and so that's why you don't notice anything good in the darn, in the darn pantry, because if, it if it's here, I eat it. And so having two pantries made no sense. And so I decided to do this monstrosity, which uh, actually my new door is coming. So this door must have taken an impact. There's a little little divot here. And so when we first got it, it wasn't sealing. Uh, and so what we had to do is just kind of leave this loose and tuck a little, little piece of something in there to keep it poking out. But I got a new door coming that should solve the problem. But these are counter depth which we really didn't need, but that's what Sub-Zero makes. <laughs> it's just it's so cool. Yeah, what's in the Mormon fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, see what's in there. Not a whole heck of a lot. A little broccoli that'll, that'll guarantee to go rotten. We'll just throw it away. <laughs> I swear we bought, we've probably thrown away more broccoli than any human has ever thrown away, in their, yes. humans have ever thrown away in their lives. Always have good intentions. Um, obviously, we need to go to the grocery store. That's some, I haven't eaten any of these. I will now that I know they're there. So the, um, but this is where I got stocked up with uh, Snake River Farms for my new outdoor kitchen. So I always buy my, apparently Ryan just, um, I'll always keep your uh, camel backpacks in the freezer so they don't get moldy and nasty. But these, uh, so these are dual 36s. I think if I'm gonna do it again, um, I would do dual 30s. I think is what I'm gonna do in my next house. But this is, this is pretty freaking cool. So actually they're coming to do the door tomorrow, but at least they got it nice and aligned, everything's square. So hopefully, hopefully the fix isn't worse than the problem. 
And then this was a concept, an idea I've had for a long time where I want to have a drink station, you know, and I hate, I hate having the dispenser either in the fridge or on the fridge. It turns into a pee pee drivel disaster. Uh, and so with this, the, you know, the concept here, and I'm going to do this at the next house. The difference is what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to have a tall cabinet here with cups, all kinds of like matching cups because like kids can't reach, you know, so they can't reach up here. Um, and I'm going to design it so that I have the proper drains and all of that stuff. And so you want to drink, you come here. I dunk my hand in there. It's, I, I like doing this for everybody. Look at this. It's my ice, people. Put my hand in there, put my tongue in there. And um, so this is the nugget ice with the Scotsman uh, with, a, um, uh, with a motorized drain. So it pumps it into this area. So we had to sacrifice this cabinet for, um, for, for a drain. And, um, and then this thing here is called a Zip Hydro Tap. I don't know that I'll do this again. First of all, see it's already getting kind of kind of beat up, you know, from who knows what. People, Michelle banging stuff off of it, and Kate throwing cups. But the idea here is if I want cold water, hit the button. I've got cold filtered water. Now we have a whole house filtration system as well. Um, but uh, the other thing you can do is we can switch to sparkling. So it also does sparkling water. And of course, this is a drain to catch the pee pee dribble at the end. And then you can also do boiling, double tap boiling, uh, and I screwed up in that this is on the same circuit as my microwave, and so I've had it many times where I do boiling water in the microwave and it trips the breaker, but I really don't want to run a new, a new line for that. But the, uh, the zip system is actually here. Uh, you also do need to make sure that the hydro tap, so that has the, so there's the carbon the CO2 tank, and then the zip system's here and it tells me, you know, the filter, where the filter's at and all that stuff. The water's sitting there boiling at 208 degrees. Probably sucks a lot of juice. So this probably added, you know, 20 bucks a month to my electric bill. Uh, but putting it in a cabinet, this cabinet is big and vented, so I haven't had any issues. We don't, we don't do high volume at all uh, in the house anyway. So, but if you did, they sell a ventilation system that, you, that comes with the unit that you may need to do. So I matched, so we had to buy this countertop and this countertop to for here. So that cost is, it probably would have cost me less to just buy a whole new kitchen. It's like $6,000 to get those two pieces, to get those two goofy matching cheap quartz, you know, but that's what we had to do. So all the lights in here are Cree CR6T. They're 3000 Kelvin. Uh, they're just retrofits, they're LED retrofits, uh, high CRI. Hi. How'd that happen? Yeah, there's a bunch of wires on. That monitor is awesome, though. Yeah, I like it. It's really nice. It'll auto flip too. Yeah. So all the lights in here, I've switched to. They're just LED retrofits from. Uh, we'll be selling these soon. Uh, I'm just waiting on this global supply. Uh, but these are a six-inch uh, Cree uh, CR6 CR6T, and these are the. 1100 lumen version. Um, I'm going to swap these from 3000 Kelvin to 3500. I just think that the color of this room would do better uh, in this color temp rather than the color temp we have have here. So the problem is, is nobody really makes 3500K light bulbs. So we'll just have to deal with that. I don't have the right bulbs in these, but these are from restoration. This lighting fixture in the dining room is also from restoration hardware. Um, I want to say I spent, I just looked at the invoice, it was like 11 grand for the lights in here, uh, plus, excluding the Cree stuff. So probably 12 grand worth of light changes in the house. I've got a few more things to do, um, but that's what it costs to get decent, decent light fixtures. So I think that's all we really have for the kitchen. Um, that table in the dining room was our, our last house. Uh, and Michelle got some home goods, little floor mat thingy for that. The tile obviously was already here. Well, since all the work is really done in here, uh, I'm going to have the company come out and deep clean our, our tile again uh, and, uh, and then really kind of dial the place in. I need to take everything out of the cabinets and dust everything. There's freaking, there's like an inch of dust on this here. So I've got to 
from all the sanding and all the stuff they've done, we've got to just go and clean everything up. Uh, and then like drawer organization, I always show you this. This is Michelle's drawer. This is Matt's drawer. <laughs> So I'm going to be doing um, like this it doesn't close most of the time. Um, she, luckily, she doesn't ever watch these videos. Uh, and so Hefele, H-A-F-E-L-E, Hefele, uh, I'm going to start buying stuff to organize all the cabinet drawers. So that's one of the next, next steps, things that I'm going to work on here in the kitchen. So we did these light fixtures. You know, when I moved in, I took the grate down and vacuumed up in the, you know, in the, uh, uh, in the air conditioning system. We've sort of revamped the AC system as well. All the walls are painted uh, Benjamin Moore. Uh, it's Benjamin Moore color, but it's AC 25 Harbor Gray. It's probably not coming very well in, in the, you know, the color rendering on the, of the camera. All of the trim is just a base Sherwin's white. Uh, so these are Sherwin's cashmere is the paint uh, or use Benjamin Moore Bain, Ben line. Don't go for that fancy crap, the wannabe fancy stuff. Stick with their base. Like every paint manufacturer has a best version. Ryan's bathroom, change the lights, change the toilet, change the, um, the, the thingy, the shower head, change the shower, whatever handle, added the hardware. This is all from Kohler. Um, I do need to change out this because he somehow ruined this thing, so that, that thing broke. But this is, you know, again, having dirtball kids. If this was me, it wouldn't look like that. Um, the laundry room's changed quite a bit as well. Uh, so I'm waiting on one handle here. Uh, so these were, this was painted, so this was brown, so we painted this, painted these. Never paint cabinets if you can help it, um, but put hardware on here. It looks, you know, semi-white trash fancy. It's like DIY HDTV, you know, uh, which I, I'd rather, uh, next, if, if I were to do this again, I'd rip out all the cabinets, buy all new cabinets instead of doing it this way. This one here, we added this cabinet, which made a you know pretty significant difference to our ability to store stuff, but, and then we had some extra tiles left over, so we did a backsplash here. I didn't want to spend, I cheaped out and didn't do a new countertop, but we just left this alone and did a, a Kohler, but metal, metal uh, new new faucet for this place. And once I get the last couple of handles in our own back order, we'll, we'll swap that out. Ryan's room, nothing's changed since last, you guys saw last video. Um, you know, he's got his 49 inch ultra wide and we got some restoration hardware, RH Teen is what this line is from. And then let's see what kind of disaster we got going on here. But uh, his closet. Also, never do freaking pocket doors like this or junk. Well, not too bad. So his closet organization is all done as well. Um, this is the coolest room in the house because the air conditioner sits like right there. So it uh, needs a little bit of revamp. We'll do the garage last. And by the way, go check out, I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a garage full tour video as well, uh, where we deep dive into the garage here that'll be up on the channel here shortly. So entry, um, the whole house is an ADT system, which we never freaking use, but we got it. You know, it's, this community's double white trash fancy because you got two gates. You gotta go through the one guard gate and then through the second gate and then here. So, and we, it already is in the middle of nowhere. So I'm probably a good candidate to come rob. But, uh, but we do have an ADT system, we do have cameras running, and you know, I'm able to capture that if I ever need to. A too large of a restoration fixture in here. This is, I think, a 72 inch, or is this the 54 inch? Uh, but we're fancy, expensive, or semi. I guess not expensive, because if you buy a chandelier, chandeliers you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on. I want to say this is like 2,800 bucks or something like that. This has always been my dream. This drives Michelle crazy. I've got speakers coming out all, all over the place. So I actually, I, I've got to, we got to take some photos of these, but these are uh, Evoke, uh, Dynaudio Evoke 50s. And then my JL subwoofer blew up somehow. So I think I'm going to take the amplifier out and send it to the JL. This thing weighs like 200 pounds. So it's 160 something pounds, but it just blew up. I don't know what the heck happened to it. So. Um, oh, I've swapped it out for my Dynaudio sub. So living room, this was the couch that I had in my home theater that we've ruined for sure. It's a microfiber couch that, you know, there's dog, freaking dog and kids. So I've just resigned the fact that this will stay here until we move and it's ruined, but it's super comfy. It's a, uh, 
Lazy Boy Devin is the model. And then this was a custom table that we had built for our last house. Michelle got this rug from Home Goods for probably six or 800 bucks. And it just kind of worked out okay. And then over here, I actually made some changes here last you saw, and last couple of times you were here, I had some NAD stuff sitting here. And I'm in love, absolutely in love. So NAD M17 version 2i is the, uh, is the preamplifier. It's freaking amazing. And then I have the, uh, what is it, the U, uh, UB, or U8, DPU 820 is the Blu-ray player, which I never use, but, because I'm always streaming everything. And then I've also swapped, so I still have a single Sunfire seven channel amp. This is being switched to the NAD M28, but the fronts are gonna be powered by the uh, rather uh, awesome M22. Uh, so that's a two channel amp. It's 260 watts or something, class D, but it's a Purify class D. Um, it, they run super cool. I'm, I'm uncertain how much I like the NAD amps, but this one so far sounds fantastic on the little baby speakers that I have for now. Uh, so I actually have the, the big brother to this coming. I just had these. Uh, and so this is a Contour 20i. I have Contour 60s, which are you know big monster floor standings that are coming. And the thing that I'm most shocked about, uh, this is a Dynaudio Sub 6, which is two, you know, two active sealed uh, nine inch woofers. It's absolutely fantastic. And for this room, you know, the JL was just too much. Uh, so it just, it sounds incredible in here. So I'm gonna keep that subwoofer here and I'm, I'll sell the JL. If somebody wants to talk me into selling them the JL stuff, um, you know, hit me up, I'll, I'll sell it to you, but I gotta get it fixed first. This is the contour center, which is the statement piece. I love that center channel. Other than the dust that's on the bottom of there, Bryce, don't zoom in on that. I cleaned up the whole system, but I didn't, I didn't dust that. And so then in the ceiling, so this is uh, Dolby Atmos. Um, so it's five channels surround, so 5.2.1. Um, so five channels, so the rears are in the ceiling, which is not ideal, but you know, it sounds okay. Um, the fronts here are height channels. So these are our Atmos, that's the dot two. Uh, and then of course the three front channels and the subwoofer. Sounds nice in here, it's good you know, for what this room can be. It's comfy, 77 inch C. This is a C9 OLED LG. It's ISF calibrated. Uh, and then the whole house, we're doing the Orbi Pro system. I, I punted all the um, ubiquity stuff. I got tired of calling Bryce and him sighing on the phone. So I got rid of it. And then, uh, so the Orbi system's been, been working okay here. So the master, um, the only thing that's changing here is I still have my my uh, special 40s. I got speakers. I told you I got speakers everywhere. Just some, some $3,500 pair of uh, bookshelf speakers sitting there that I'm in love with that I didn't want anybody touching. So I put over there just to sit there. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with those speakers. But I'm probably going to have to sell them because there's nothing to do with it. But we have these custom pieces of furniture that we had from our last house. This was custom made. This is a restoration corbel table. This was a, um, a restoration lamp. Uh, and we just kind of re repurposed the typical restoration bed, classic restoration hardware stuff. We still have this janky fan that I'm not sure what to do with. Fans, fans, I'll talk about it when we go look at the outdoor kitchen, but fans are so frustrating to me. Swap this restoration fixture here. We revamped and redid the closet, so it was a kind of a joint closet, and it made, we made it a his and hers, so this is mine. And um, you can see all the dust, like all the hangers have dust on top of them. There's dust here just from doing all the you know, cabinets and all that stuff, so, and they were in and out of here doing our solar system. But Michelle's closet's over here, so we spent a couple thousand bucks and had them like do some double hang and put a bank of drawers on my side and I've got the um what does that say Fort Knox safe with all my monies and my gold watches and uh um my cuff uh, gold cufflinks and I, I, I don't have any of that stuff yet it's car titles that's in there and then the bathroom we changed all the lighting in here uh, Panasonic Whisper Quiet fans, uh, and we did uh, the shower Newport brass with uh, Delta, Delta, whatever you call those things, valves. Uh, but Newport brass heads and Newport brass hardware there. And, uh, you know, 
if we were gonna live here forever, I'd rip out the shower just because of that stupid glass thingy. It was just junk. This is all uh, Brizo hardware. So I added this since last year in here for my towel that I never get one to put there. And I'm always walking around dripping water, looking for a towel. Um, same thing here. So these little things, you can still see my pen mark on the wall. I've got a touch up. Uh, and so this, this hardware is really nice it's called B R I Z O. Uh, Ferguson has it uh, really, really nice. Michelle and I actually went and looked at this six or seven million dollar house, not to buy, but to just our designer showing some of the things she did. And uh, they had all this hardware in there, so I thought it was, I felt, felt fancy. And then in here is, um, so we did the dual switch for you know, light, night light LED and then full LED on the uh, Panasonic Whisper Quiet fan. This has a motion sensor on it and a humidity sensor. The one in here has a humidity sensor, so I don't really have to do anything. The fans kick on. So you walk into this room and the fan kicks on. And we did a new American standard toilet in here with new hardware. So that's all, all been changed. Let's go over to the other side, the other wing of the house. And the house is 2,557 square feet. So it's a pretty, you know, pretty modest, pretty small house. We paid 405 for it. Um, I think if I were to sell it today, it'd probably sell for 750. You know, the price, prices have gone up substantially. And then of course I've improved the heck out of it. Um, we did restoration. These are from restoration here in the hallway. Um, Kate's room, I finally put a, a bulb in her, which are terrible. <laughs> it freaking does all kinds of weird crap. So that's a Cree connected max and it loses connection all the darn time. So you can see it's telling me I need to reprogram the thing. Like pairing mode, it's like pair me. Yeah, it's uh, so stupid. I hate it. My Phillips one's done. Yeah, well, the, the cre it's janky junk, so I gotta rip that out and change it. So I wanted to try those out. I also did them on the soffit outside and they always lose connection as well. Uh, so new toilet, new hardware. Um, I forget which hardware this is. I think it's from Kohler. Uh, new light fixture in Kate's room. Nothing's changed in here since our last tour. Um, I really do need to get rid of these fans, but you know, Kate's room is nice. And then um, we did her, this closet had no organization, so we had to do that whole, that whole thing with the bank and drawers and all that stuff. So that cost me a pretty penny. I don't know what it cost me, but I'm sure it was a lot. And these walls, this is the only room that has a different color. I don't remember what color this is, but it's a, it's a great color for girls. And then this room I'm about to tear apart. So I'm gonna get into this next. Um, I've been laying out where I'm gonna put my desk. <laughs> Freaking rainbow corns, LOL dolls. Yeah, this is my nightmare. I don't know that, I didn't know you are into dolls, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> cabbage patch. <laughs> you ever smell a cabbage patch, Bryce? I don't wanna smell this is before. This is before your time. What? I'm telling you, smell, it's the greatest smell ever. No. You, know, you weren't, you're too young for Cabbage Patch, but my sister had, you know, 20 of those things and yeah, the best part about that. them. My sister's like me. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to rip this goofy thing out and redo this room and uh, do some recessed lighting, some DMF recessed lighting. I'm going to test that out in here and build this office. Remember, I know I'm moving. It's going to take at least two years. Two years in my life is a gosh darn eternity. So I'm going to be in this house for like three years. Oh shoot. I'm going to touch up the wall. But this is why you do flat paint, people, because now I can just walk in, ch -ch -ch, little dusteroo with some paint, good to go. I don't have to roll out the whole wall. So you go to all these people's houses and they do shiny paint and you see all the areas they touched up, if they ever touch up, is you're not washing your walls in your freaking guest room. You can wash that all you want, it's not gonna take it off. And so you wanna touch it up. And so then when you look at this wall and this wall looks flat and flush and nice. But if you paint with shiny paint and you touch it with other paint, touch it up, you have to roll out the whole wall. And even then you're gonna see the roller marks. So this is just our overflow closet. Crap, I got a, a bunch of fancy microphones yeah, up there. There's like a couple of grand in there. <laughs> I need to get, this is the audio coming. This, is, this has been my dream, Bryce, to have be like an audio hoarder. Uh, uh, yeah. Audio yeah, yeah. Here, the bathroom. Yeah. I'm telling you, these are these are clutch, Bryce. Crocs. Crocs. 
Croc sandals. Crocs are cool now again, aren't they? I mean, I have Crocs, but I don't wear them out in public. Yeah, I don't either. I just wear them yeah. around the house. A Croc is nice. Like, I need to go out and get the mail. I put my Crocs on. Bingo. Boom. So people are yelling at me about wearing shoes in my house. I really generally don't wear, wear them in the house. So let's go this way. I'll show you the garage. Remember, we're going to do, actually, let's do the outdoor kitchen first. So this has changed quite a bit since you were last here. It's come together. We've got the cabinets in. We've got a fully operational Evo. I actually cooked breakfast on it this morning. Uh, and so the concept here is to have, um, have a money pit of uh, outdoor, outdoor equipment, I guess. I don't know. So while I was waiting for Bryce to come over, I was shopping for, we got bar stools coming. I'm gonna buy those from Restoration today. And then we're gonna do like a couple of chairs and a couch over here. Not that we're gonna really sit out here much, but just to finish it so it looks the part. You can see I started tearing apart this fan last night to try to see if I can get this junk to work. Um, and then I went to a fan place. So, um, Anyway, we'll, I'll, I'll update you on that. We're going to do some uh, exterior lighting on here, so I'm going to do some recess. We're going to climb in the attic, cut a hole out into this area so we can get out here, and then we're going to do recess fixtures up here. Because this is too big of an area to do a light bulb on a fan. It's just not, not enough light. Yeah, this has been my light source out here. I'm <laughs> grilling. So the Evo, super cool. So since we're out here, I'm going to show you how this works. So here's the top. I should put that underneath. So this would be the top for it, All right? So it looks like this normally. You could cover it if you want to. I plan on using it a lot, so I don't think I'll need to cover it. And then I'll do a video on how this thing works and how to clean it and take care of it and all that stuff. Um, but there's an inner and an outer burner. So there's a big circle burner in the middle or in the outer and then another circle in the, in, in the inner. And then all you really do is scrape it. So when you're done with it, when it's still hot, you scrape it. I bring everything to the center, and then I just kind of, you know, just get some paper towels and just grab all the junk in the middle. Uh, and then you use a uh, like a scrub, like a Scotch Brite scrub pad, and you scrub it. And then you put some fresh oil, and you just keep it oiled like that. All the drippings run to the side, which you just wipe down under the drain here. The drain has a little cup, and you can see I've used it three or four times now, and it's just easy to keep clean. I just clean it after every every use. Um, but it's freaking sweet. So it's 30 inches of awesomeness. Cook anything it's you like want on there. there. Yeah, yeah. It's your own hibachi or, you know, whatever you want to do on it. It's freaking amazing. It's so cool. I've been dreaming about this thing ever since I saw it. This is stolen from Sam the Cooking Guy. Um, we ended up getting, uh, when we got our, picked out our granite, so we got this installed. These cabinets are uh, PVC cabinets. They're called Nature Cast. They're a freaking racket. You know, total nonsense how much money these are. I think, I think the cabinets alone were like 28 grand or something insane. Maybe more than that. I don't, I don't even know. I haven't paid the bill yet. The guy hasn't sent me the bill yet. So maybe, maybe he went out of business and I got lucky. Um, so I did the same knobs. It's here they are. Top, yeah, TK, top knobs. Flat black. I got them in various sizes. So I have a few left, but I have one more that I gotta put on there. The only thing that's bothering me is the grill kind of pulled this thing. This is the, this is because you gotta do a, an insulator because these are plastic cabinets. And so it's kind of pulling inward. And I, don't, I don't like how that looks, but I'm just gonna have to uh, forget about it. Lynx Percet Professional 48 inch grill. Um, so I did uh, infrared on one side. You can see I cooked a steak last night broke my heart, took the perfect grill, and now it's never going to look the same. And then the ceramic burners on the other side, um, and uh, you know, it has like a cantilever, like a spring-loaded top, so it's, it doesn't, even though this is really heavy, it feels really light, smooth. It has uh, lights, integrated lights, blue LEDs there for all you, all you people who like douchey colored lights, which I hate, but I wish they were white, but that's what you get. So this is pretty sick. But the plan here, and that's what's over sitting over there, is a that's a 60-inch um, hood. I don't know that I'm going to need the hood, but I've already ordered it. So I have a 64-inch. This is um, uh, the hood is 60 inches. This is what 48 inches here. So I have a I'm going to do a 62-inch wall. So close the window in and put you know new screens in, 
Uh, and then we have a big piece of this granite that will go from the, from the countertop to the ceiling. And then the hood will mount to that. I'm starting to think it's kind of... And uh, the reason why I put these porta carpus here is so that I can do it without getting homeowner's approval. <laughs> so, so the plan is to... Uh, I'm just going to put the block in there. I'm not freaking asking for permission to do that. And Mike and I probably just do that and then mount the hood to that. The hood would be, you know, roughly 36 inches off the base of the grill. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But these cabinets are pretty cool. I mean, this is all PVC in here. So it's all plastic, so it won't mold or mildew or won't um, warp or anything over time. Uh, they're all, you know, soft clothes. These are, you know, again, that, that six or seven million dollar house I went and looked at, they had these exact color, exact cabinets were going in there. And um, that's not where I found them, which just, it was a coincidence. And then this is a goofy garbage can. It's kind of a weird way they did this. Seems like a waste of a cabinet, but. Um, I do have a sub-zero fridge, uh, counter under-counter fridge. The, the guy said, you know, I was trying to, I was, I was yelling about the price of these things and trying to figure out a way to do it cheaper and because I didn't want to spend this much money on an outdoor kitchen. And uh, he said, well, just get yourself an under-counter fridge and that'll save us a cabinet. Well, I think he didn't realize I was going to buy a, you know, a, a sub-zero fridge. So we got a little sub-zero fridge that will have nothing in it, but it'll look pretty. And so, picture out here, I'm going to get a better fan, um, and Big Ass Fans is the only company on the planet that makes a decent fan. They're all junk, absolute garbage. Uh, and so, I guess nobody cares about, a, you know, quality materials, because I guess, as long as it looks good from far, I guess that's what most people want. So, I'll move the fan closer to the ceiling, even though you shouldn't, but I don't give a crap. I'm going to do that. Swap these speakers out for some Dyn Audio, same speakers I have in there, the S the Studio Series, the uh, C80s. Uh, we'll swap those out. It's on zone two, the NAD. Um, and then I'm going to do probably 12 recessed fixtures at uh, 3,500K out here from DMF lighting. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, and then I've got the restoration seating going out here. I'll put, um, I'm going to take that Sony, um, Sony 55 that I have, or no, I think it's a Sony 65 that I have in that room that, that I'm going to convert to my office. And we'll put the Sony here. And. Um, probably keep this table and just have a little seating area for no reason. There's a freaking TV right there. It's kind of stupid, but I just want it to look finished. So, so that's what we're going to do. But for now, I'm using Milwaukee Light to cook up some burgers and some steaks, some uh, Snake River Farm snakes, steaks. And, uh, but this looks pretty awesome though. This is, uh, this is a good tester, a lot of money, but I, I'll, get, I'll get a bunch of that money back, I'm sure, when I sell the house, if not all of it. Because, I mean, this house, there, in other areas like Orlando or other areas around here, if you, you were an hour away, there's tons of houses like this. But here, there's nothing like this. Nothing. Actually, and I take it back, even in Orlando, they're always doing Whirlpool refrigerators and a bunch of junk. So then the garage. Oh man, Michelle left the door open. Let's see the door. So the garage is coming together since last you saw. I got all the tile done. So this is all limestone tile um, that I never knew limestone because it was a nightmare to install. It cost me two times as much to install. I did these uh, T3, T316 stainless shelves. Again, I'm gonna get into all the detail with this stuff in the garage video. I finished the Swiss tracks this week. Uh, so the Swiss tracks is done. The um, pressure washer system is gonna be custom installed right here. So that's what's on top of this cabinet. Uh, microfiber towels are in here. Um, I'll go in, again, I'll go into more detail. 75 inch Sony uh, LCD. Uh, and then this comfortably fits three cars. Uh, and I got my two Tesla chargers on the wall. The thing that stinks is, hit me up. I'll sell this to you dirt cheap. It looks janky, but it's just dirty and has a cellophane on top of it. So if I pull the cellophane off, it, you know, so that door isn't all scratched up. But this is an 18 foot beautiful roll up door. It cost me 3,000 bucks to get that thing here. And I got denied from the douchebag homeowners. So just sitting here. I already sold the eight foot door. So I'm stuck with these squeak fest, super loud, annoying, garbage, $400 co-play doors that is acceptable for these morons. So I'm going to insulate these. Um, for those wondering, these are hurricane, hurricane straps. 
I've never in, ever seen a garage door other than like maybe Hurricane Andrew. Um, your garage door is not freaking going anywhere, but they decided we all needed that. So it's a requirement. Um, but these are Sabre cabinets. It's a 22 foot countertop and uh, it's, uh, I think it's pretty nice. Cree uh, ZR troffers, Cree KR um, um, recess fixtures, all in a zero to 10 volt system powered by Lutron, um, uh, shoot, what's it called? Lutron Vive, uh, and I have Picos on the wall to control the lighting. So this is, this is turning in really nice. Got some Dyn Audio stuff here, uh, but like I said, we'll get into the detail of this, this garage uh, on our next, uh, next video on the channel. Let's go outside, show you, uh, show you what's been done out there, and we'll wrap it up. So we got some more work to do on the garage. I got to like jack shaft operators and try to, I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to try to fix the doors if I can. So we'll try to do that. We did, um, we did the, uh, you know, this is supposed to be our match. We talked a lot about this in previous videos, but this was like a goofy flower bed thingy. And so we got rid of that. Uh, our rock showed up. So we finally got our rock. We call in our mud rock because it looks terrible. So hopefully after a few more rains, that'll get fixed. A uh, whole new septic system, which we had to do. Um, I did a, uh, in, the, in the soffit here is where I did those Cree connected maxes, which change color on me all the time, so it's terrible. But the yard is kind of back together and looking pretty decent. Chase has his invisible fence where he, uh, he stays in the yard, works great. Stays in it about 95% of the time. Occasionally he'll break out and we'll have to go chase him down. But like there was a bunch of landscaping here. We got rid of all that and just simplified it. Made it nice, neat, simple, clean. Did the edging around to hold the rock in place. Um, we did uh, risers on our septic system so we can service it better. Um, so I can go in and, and clean the filter every six months, which I probably will never do. But um, this was a huge ordeal, huge project. This is what originally got me in trouble with the homeowners people was fixing the problem the developer built a crappy septic system. The, <coughs> the back side of the house has kind of come together here. We have uh, the Mitsubishi Mini Split and then Tesla Solar. Uh, and so they had to add a whole new bunch of transfer switches and a whole new sub panel, move that over to here. And in order to cover this all up, I spent $3,000 more on some mature um, Portocarpus trees to block all this stuff so they get in, get in trouble um, from the homeowners people. Here's my four power walls, which still isn't active, still isn't turned on. Got to wait for the power company to give approval. Sometimes that takes months. Well, it's taken months because it's my house. Uh, and put two more Portocarpus here, two more here, to cover up the batteries. Uh, and then here's our, um, our water for the house. So, I did a Renai um, tankless gas water heater, which I'd almost like to have electric now because we have, uh, we'll have solar, but the, the, the batteries can't, can't sustain. Those batteries do about 30 amps a piece. And then that's the Kinetico water treatment system. So the, having the extra filter on the, uh, what's it called, on the system, the uh, zip system really isn't necessary. Uh, but uh, we have a 250 gallon uh, LP uh, liquid liquid propane tank and so that's what powers this and then the gas line runs around the back here to gas line that then I had them tee it off for my for my grill these trees are gonna work out really nicely here so if you take a step back you can see I have you know, 42 solar panels it's a 16 and a half kilowatt system I believe that's 16 and a half kilowatts net so they're on this side of the house here. They did a really great job. It looks pretty fantastic. And then on the other side of the house there as well, we got a new, new house right, right there, right there. So that's the byproduct of living in a suburbia here. We have um, this, the old pad was here already for what, I don't know. And so Michelle had them put a fire pit in that we'll never use, but we got that. And then look how nice the backyard turned out. So there's the rest of our 42 panels. Um, that looks pretty, it's not turned on yet, but you know, we just wait forever for things. Our mud rock kind of completed the look, simplified all this. I put all these trees in here 
So when you're in a house, it's kind of, you can barely see that giant monstrosity right there. So, but we knew someone would be moving in there at some point. And then the last thing I gotta do on the exterior here is I gotta fix the drainage. So this, this here needs a French drain because this fills up with water. So that's why it, it's kind of trenched off here to keep the water from filling up too much. And my neighbor wants to kill me because he doesn't like my garbage cans. I spent so much money getting these garbage cans out here where they are. That's the port for insect stuff. I guess it works because we don't have any bugs in this house, unlike our last house. But I had to do all this for the homeowner's people. So we put this pad in, hid the garbage cans, and then did these. These trees, they cost like 400 bucks a piece when they're mature like this. So. And of course, the whole exterior of the house has been painted and or touched up at least. And I built this little pad for our basketball hoop. So that's the house. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. It's coming together. Um, I guess our next update would be when the garage is finished and I get the house clean and I start to organize the drawers and all of that stuff. And I'll share that, I'll share that with you. I, I didn't mention some of the other stuff in the garage, like the magic stairs and the magic lift. We'll show we'll show that on the garage video. But uh, anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for staying along on the ride here with this house. It's uh, turned out to be pretty nice. I mean, you know, somebody's going to want to come and swoop this thing up and uh, you know get get all this all these upgrades that I did and you know take it to the finish line. You know when we move out. But like I said, it's probably going to take us two years to build the house. I'm going to meet with the architect tomorrow on our third meeting. We're going to be choosing elevations, finalizing our spec, and then going to engineering, ordering trusses and stuff like that. So, I mean, maybe it's only a year and a half, but I bet you it's two years before we move into the new house. So, you know, the house that we're going to build. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, thanks to the wives for this is the only video they ever watch of mine. So, thanks to your wives for watching as well, and significant others, and we'll see you on the next one. Catch you soon.